Tyler and uh, Sturgill too, man. That's my style of country music. Hey, can you do me a favor? What? Sorry in the corner, sitting there alone. Next thing I knew, we were dancing to some old country song. Lost my heart before I knew it in those shy brown eyes. So caught in the moment as time flew by. But the music stopped and she walked out before I said a thing. Now weeks gone by, but in my mind I'm still there wondering Are you thinking about me when I'm thinking about you? Girl, I think about you all day long Do you think about me too? Wondering if I cross your mind has got me dying inside It's like the middle of a story that I I could write Only held you for a moment So it's hard to believe I can't keep from thinking about you Are you thinking about me? I never thought a girl shake me up that way they say time is a healer but i didn't want to wait so i went back there for one more chance and even though i doubt across your mind still i got to know oh i gotta know are you thinking about me when i'm thinking think about you all day long do you think about me too wondering if i cross your mind has got me dying inside it's like the middle of a story that i'm wishing i could write i only held you for a moment so it's hard to believe i can't keep from thinking about you are you thinking thinking about me when I was thinking about you girl I thought about you all day long did you think about me too wondering if across your mind has got me dying inside it's like the middle of a story that I'm wishing I could write I only held you for a moment so it's hard to Sorry in the corner, sitting there alone. Next thing I knew, we were dancing to some old country song. 
Lost my heart before I knew it in those shy brown eyes. So caught in the moment as time flew by. But the music stopped and she walked out before I said a thing. Now weeks gone by, but in my mind I'm still there wondering. Are you thinking about me when I'm thinking about you? Girl, I think about you all day long. Do you think about me too? Wondering if I cross your mind has got me dying inside. It's like the middle of a story that I and I could write I only held you for a moment so it's hard to believe I can't keep from thinking about you are you thinking about me I never thought a girl shake me up that way they say time is a healer but i didn't want to wait so i went back there for one more chance and even though i doubt across your mind still i got to know oh i gotta know are you thinking about me when i'm thinking Across your mind has got me dying inside. It's like the middle of a story that I'm wishing I could write. I only held you for a moment, so it's hard to believe. I can't keep from thinking about you. Are you thinking about me? thinking about me when I was thinking about you girl I thought about you all day long did you think about me too wondering if across your mind has got me dying inside it's like the middle of a story that I'm wishing I could write I only held you for a moment so it's hard to can't keep from thinking about you are you thinking about me whoa i can't keep from thinking about you are you thinking about me Good morning, pickers and grinners. Welcome to The Fret Job, a live video podcast where we dig into the bones of the guitar world and our discussions touch on pretty much anything with strings and anything that makes music. And uh, The Fret Job is brought to you live from Frizzell Guitars at 228 Jane Trail, Danville, Kentucky, Kentucky's premier guitar store and full-service luthier shop. Um, I hope everybody heard our new introductory music. Uh, that is an Ohio artist, Jeff Stoffer. Are you thinking of me? And it is uh, he is a sponsored artist from Frizzell Guitars. Um, 
he will be playing a Frizzell guitar soon. And uh, I'm just happy to be here. It's been two weeks. I mean, we we took a little break there and had the holidays. Hope everybody had a good holiday. And now I'm going to introduce my co-host. He is the owner and professional luthier at Frizzell Guitars, Mr. Brandon Edwards. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Fred Job, everybody. My name is uh, Brandon Edwards here. I'm the professional luthier here at Frizzell Guitars, the connoisseur of all things uh, strings, all things musical instruments wise. And uh, let me take a minute to introduce my co-host here, the world's greatest person, Jonathan Recorder. He is the connoisseur of everything real estate and homes. He is uh, he is the best picking and grinner I know. And uh, <laughs> nobody nobody can uh, nobody can play that jaw hard quite like he does. But well, I appreciate it, man. I, I'm just glad to be here. I'm kind of missed it last week but uh it was good to have a little break spend some time with family and and have a good memorial day weekend um what's been going on man i mean i know two weeks is a long time for us to to go without getting on here and and i'm just wondering what's uh what's been happening at frizzell guitar the last couple weeks well it's uh it it's been kind of a graduation going on so that's that's you know that's, yeah, a lot of people's been going and here and there, and everybody's taking their beginning of summer vacation. But uh, yeah, so hopefully things are going to start picking up pretty heavy. I got a bass in for restoration. It's an old Tysco Apollo bass, so that's, cool. That's going to be a fun project to do and to work with. And you've I'm, got a you've got another project going, and, and and I've. I've already got kind of the inside scoop on it, but you, you've got a student that you've been working with here recently. And I, guys, if you all had heard everything I've heard out of out of this, you would be really impressed. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about this student that you got that's that's a shining star. Well, okay, so I'll start with this. So about three, about two and a half months ago, maybe three. But I'm thinking two and a half months ago, I was, it was actually right after Christmas. It was actually January when she started. I want to say it was either, yeah, January when she started. And her mom came to me at Christmas time with a guitar. And her mom said, do you offer guitar lessons by chance? She wanted to, she didn't know much about guitar, but she wanted to get new strings put on it because her, her family member that plays that lives in Tennessee told her that you're going to want new strings on the guitar. Yeah. You're going to want to have it set up. She didn't know what that meant. So she brings it to me and is like, hey, I want to have this guitar set up. I want to have this, whatever that means, and go through. And uh, she found me on Google. So she come in and uh, she told me she's where she's from, uh, said her husband and her family mo moved down here for because her husband uh, works at a, he's one of the managers at a factory, and they bring him down here. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking, and she's like, okay, lessons. Well, she's like, She's like my daughter. I didn't think no more about it. She's coming for lessons. We set a we set a first day for her lesson. So when she opened for Christmas, she got a she got a she got a coupon for one one lesson. So she came in, and when she came in, I met her sister, her mom, and her. And uh, there was something special from the first time I met her. She sat down, and I give every student the same thing: parts of the guitar, chords, a chart of chords, basic chords, and whatnot, and the whole spiel. So I'm going over the, the charts of chords with her, and I'm like, here's this chord, here's that chord, here's this chord, and I'm like, this, what not. Well, she looks at the paper, and she starts playing them all. She's like, is these how they're supposed to go? And I thought, <laughs> somebody's messing with me. She's played guitar before. And her mom said, has she played? And she said, no, we are being God-honest truthful. She has never picked up a guitar before in her life. And I'm like, well, she's never picked up a guitar before in her life. That is insane, because she is incredible. And uh, she started. That is incredible, she man. She started all those chords like they were perfect and switching between them naturally. So I immediately, what the first thing that came to my head is I've got some, I've got something special here. I know I do. So I yeah. went to the computer and I said, she told me what kind of music she liked. I went to the computer and I printed off a song called "Heads Carolina, Tails California" off the computer. And uh, I, as soon as I printed that off, I went and ran it to her, and I said, "Hey." Just, just see what you can do with this. I'm not asking you to learn this. I just want you to see. I just want you to see what you could do with this. 
You had a feeling she could do something with it, didn't you? Yes. And I gave it to her, and I said, do something with it. I said, just see what you can do if you do anything at all. I just want you to just a just a little experiment. She said, okay. <laughs> as she said it. And next week she come back, and I said, did you, what did you happen? She said, well, I did this. And she started playing and singing it. And that's the first moment I heard her sing. And there was cold chills that shot down every part of my back. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. She started singing, and I literally about fell over in my chair. She literally cold chills went spining down my spinal cord in my back. And I <laughs> cold chills shaking now. And uh, she all the way through, and I said, I said, honey, I said, you have got a God gift natural talent here. I said, you are going places. I said, I told yeah. her mom, and I said, she was excited. Well, well if you think about it, man, you like what, when I first started playing guitar, you know, I, I kind of did it myself, but I gave myself these first few chords, you know, the basic chords and started trying to work on them. First of all, it took me forever to get to play any one of them really clean. And yeah. then it took me way longer to get to put them together. And then when I started trying to sing while I was playing, it was a disaster for a while. Okay. And this is something I want to say, like I gave her these songs. Okay. I gave her, so I said, Hey, I said, I'm going to give you another song here. I want you to see what you can do with the song. I said, I think we could do this song. I want to see. And uh, this song is actually, uh, this song, I gave her Baby Girl by Sugarland. I said, I think you would do great with that song. You've got the Jennifer Nettles voice. I said, I want to see what you can do with that song. She said, oh, I love that song. And her mom said, that sounds good. So she took that song, and I started giving her stuff, and she ran with everything I gave her. And I told her mom, I said, one day, her mom was in here, and I said, I said, I believe in her. I said, I think that if she wanted to at her age, she could be one of the next women voice of country music at her age. I said, she's a great singer, man. She I really said, is. I said, she's good enough. She can be one of the next voices of country music in here. I said, she could be a performer. And her mom said, do you really think? I said, I, I know that she, could, that she can open and play and that she can be a performer at 16 years old. I said, she needs to be out there. Yeah. And and the thing of it is there there's a lot of people out there that are real that are naturally talented like that, but not a lot of them ever find it in, or nobody finds it in them and or they don't go out and put themselves out there. So she's yeah. made a good decision to to start putting herself out there with it. And the thing I, is is having somebody believe. And I believe in yeah. every one of my students and I believe that they can succeed somewhere in music if they try hard enough. So we're going to we're going to let our audience here hear some of this song and keep in mind people two two and a half months ago this girl didn't play music she didn't play guitar she didn't publicly sing she hadn't even begun this journey uh, you know two or three months ago so um you know i saw her play live at the frizzell one year anniversary bash she was awesome there and now they've got this recording and and i'm impressed She's with it as well there. She opened for Brad Harden, and then she's got two shows booked already since then. On her cool. Own, which is pretty incredible, but but her mom said she didn't know she was ever going to stick with the guitar and the music, but she did. She ran with it. And uh, so that's that's pretty much it. And uh, I think... I know the garbage man's here. <laughs> <laughs> my my his, dogs are starting to bark. I think his dogs are excited to hear Ava. Let's just be real. <laughs> yeah. So... Here we go. This is the first time if you haven't seen it yet. This is incredible. Hi, this is Ava Clay with Ava C Music, and these are the Guitar Store Sessions. Here's my version of Baby Girl by Sugarland, and you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram at Ava C Music. Thank you. 
I mean, it's it's just really hard to believe that that two and a half months ago, she had never played guitar and sang. I mean, it's incredible how much that she has grown, and I'm just gonna tell you right now, like, two hundred percent. Like, I am I am extremely extremely proud of how far she's come and how yeah. great. And how many students do you have right now at Frizzell? Uh, let me see. I've got. One, one, two, three, so four, and then five. I knew you had. I've got seven. I knew you had several. I've got seven. Uh, so sometimes I'll be real with you. Sometimes it can be like a revolving door. With yeah. Computer. So if you had, I'm sure you might not eight. I've know eight exactly. Students. What's your youngest student? Six. Oldest student. Uh, Just guessing. I'm not gonna say that because I make it slap. So you can you. Can but they're adults. You, you. Yeah, you, I'll just I'm, say adult. Okay. We'll just the point I'm getting to is is they're not all kids. Yes. And and they're not all teenagers. You've got from six years old to thirty plus years old students. Jonathan, you know. give me a black eye. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, lead you down that road. But I mean, you got a good little, uh, a good little teaching thing going there. And man, I just love to see that available for kids around here. I mean, I'll tell you this, and this is what I tell. I'm gonna make this statement as I'm gonna make it now. You get some people; they don't want to practice. They don't want to put in the work for it. And then they want they want to magically you to wiggle your nose and they be good at guitar. Yeah, it's. It's not like an ATM machine. You you don't walk up to your guitar teacher and and put money in and talent comes out to you. <laughs> That's just yes. not how it works. I get you know I've I've got some are you know well, why ain't why ain't little Jimmy progressing? Well, to be honest, ma'am, little Jimmy ain't practicing. He don't want to. He yeah. don't want to. He comes in here and the the whole time lesson he can't get him to stay on focus. And I try and you know you talk to the mother. Hey hey hey. You know I'm yeah. not, it's like being a babysit. Babysitter. And lots of kids, man, they they see Even older people the, sometimes can be that way. Well, and older people. I mean anybody I mean anybody can be this way. They see somebody on TV that they look up to or aspire to be like holding that guitar and they like the idea 
of being a musician, but yes. there's work involved in it, man. It's not free rain. You don't just get it when you want it, you know. Yeah, you get sure. it when you work hard enough for it. Uh, but that's what you've got going on on that side of the business. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit more about this base that that what's going on with it. Uh, so basically, this guy several years ago bought an Apollo base. It's a Tysco. And so basically, basically, basically uh, he wants to uh, thanks uh, Mr. Alvin Key for liking the stream. So uh, I didn't realize we had notifications on on the screen overlay, but that's pretty cool. So thanks for yeah, liking cool. the stream. Um, so basically, we have a uh, basically it needs new frets. The frets are basically so the frets are the frets are basically flat. There's no meat left on them. So new frets yeah. get put in it, a new pickup, wired. He wants a new bridge and new tuners. That's pretty much okay. what's going on with this thing. That's a pretty good little amount of stuff to do. Um, so so that's what's on the bench. And then in the teaching world, you've got Ava C Music coming up. and Yeah, and that's Ava C Music on Facebook, on Instagram, and TikTok at Ava C Music. Follow her. Ava. Subscribe, guys. <clears throat> Ava underscore C underscore music, I think, something like that. But make sure you subscribe. Support. Because let me tell you, it is incredible that these young ones want to go out and they want to become the next voice of music. Because I'm going to tell you, these guys, some of these guys are getting older, and they need people to replace them. Yeah. It don't cost you a dime to support local talent like that. All it, all you got to do is pay attention to them. Yeah, all you got to do is pay attention to them. And she's already got two shows, I think, booked. And uh, it's incredible how far she's become. And uh, that's awesome. I mean, I'm just really happy of her, of her stuff, how far she's come and whatnot. Yeah. That just means the world to me. Is she's came pretty far. And you know, you got we got to support these young ones and uh, with, with what they do. So when 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 somebody's starting out. <clears throat> And, and want to get le take lessons and things like that and, and get started in learning guitar. Do you recommend them starting out with an acoustic guitar or do you recommend them start out with an electric? Whatever. I start everybody out the same thing, chords. Somebody's like, why? I start them out with chords. I teach them the basic chords and the basic You give chords. them the choice of acoustic or electric? Sort of whatever they bring, but I start them out with chords. Hey, yeah. you're going to learn chords. You're going to learn the meat. I think the most important thing to start off with is chords. I'm going to yeah. teach you chords starting off, and then we're going to go from there. Once, you, yeah. once you're able to get all your chords down, and you're able to play me a song between switching between chords, then we'll move on to scales, and yeah. we'll move on to more intricate stuff. But I start out with the chords. I start out with the parts of the guitar, the body, the different one each string is tuned to, the basics. And then now I'm sure you take them as far as they want to go. Yes. And they may just want to be a uh, yeah. five chord campfire strummer, and you know. There's some people that don't want to learn scales. They're like, yeah. "Hey, I do not want to learn scales. Scales are not me. So don't teach me scales." Like you know, but that's kind of a custom lessons, you know, whatever. And I don't believe like some people you can some people can argue with me or say what they want. I don't believe in books. Like there's guys they got to learn Mary had a little lamb and all this stuff pro by pro. Yeah. In this book, no. You teach people what they want to know, what they want to learn. That's what I thought. I thought like if somebody comes in wanting lessons and they're they're wanting to start being a guitar player, you know, you you kind of want to know their goals when they yeah. first come in. What's your goal? What music do you like, man? If you're if you show them music that they want to learn, like I yeah. had a kid coming here, and I, I won't give his name or anything like that, but yeah. I had a kid coming here and he's like, yeah, he's like, well, man, I started taking lessons with the with the with the place. They started giving lessons out. And he said they wanted me to start on a book, learn to Mary had a little and, and all this stuff yeah. in a book. He said, "Man, you come in and I, you ask me what I want to learn. And I gave you songs. You started playing those songs, yeah. and you're like, with a little, with a lot of practice and some work, we can learn those songs." And I like that. Yeah, I like it. Like I like somebody. If I was coming in asking for lessons, I would like it if if the person that I came to talk to inquire about lessons, if they said, "What are your goals? What do you want to?" You know, what do you want to achieve out of this? Do you want to be the guy that jumps up at the party and plays two or three songs? You want to play a church? Do you want, you know, what are you trying to get to here? Yeah, for sure. And people respect that and they understand, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, another thing, and this is something I thought about talking about today, and and it ties in with this is so if parents are getting ready to go out and they're going to get their kid that's going to take lessons, they're going to buy them that first guitar, and and of course we want them to buy it at Frizzell Guitars or at least get you to to order it for them. But anyway, what are some things that that a person that's inexperienced can look for to make sure they're getting a guitar that that's straight, a good guitar. So this is a very good thing to mention. And uh, this is something I'm going to mention and say is there's people don't you you go you go in and shop. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Coming to somebody like me, it's not everyone wants to help out. I can help you get a guitar that's going to be good playing and that's going to work out. You know, you're going to go somewhere and people, oh, I'm going to beat so-and-so's price on this guitar. But, yeah. hey, you're coming to me. You're buying a new guitar. And your shop's not like Walmart or Guitar Center. You can set it up for them and yeah. stuff. Or like or like some guy that sells a bunch of used guitars in there. Well, I'll cut his price by half on a you. Yeah. But here's the thing. You're getting somebody else. Even if I sell you a used guitar, I'm going to make sure it plays well, sets up well. Yeah. And, and on the new ones. And the thing is, is I'm not going to sell you no $500, $700 guitar starting out. I'm going to sell you maybe like a $300 guitar starting out yeah. and say, hey, this is what I recommend. You know, I want to try. Because you may decide it's not for you, and then you're only in, three, you know, two or 300 bucks, and you can usually get back out of them decently. But, I mean, here's the deal. You're getting a nice guitar. You're getting a guitar that has a warranty on it from the manufacturer. And the thing about it is, is... You know, I had a guy, and I'll, I'll use this as an example. So a couple weeks ago, I was had a guy in here, and he was shopping around for a guitar. He had his kid with him, and he was shopping around. Well, he come back in here about about an hour later after he come and look at the guitar. He said, "Well, I was down such and such," and I say, "He said they they would take they would take about a hundred fifty dollars off this one compared to what you got, which it was not the yeah. same guitar at all, and it was used." Um, he's like, "Wanted me to take a hundred? No." You're in new gear, you know. You're getting you're getting something that is set up, something that is good quality, that is that yeah. is that is you know love. I put my love in everything that comes out of here, and this of this uh, of this. Well, story. I mean, like even when you take in a like say you uh, Frizzell Guitars takes in a used guitar before you put it on the wall to sell, I'm sure you probably make sure that it plays you know correctly it, it it performs like it's supposed to yeah for sure i mean i try to take care of everything that comes in and out of this store and the thing is is you can go they'll take you can go somewhere and they'll take 150 dollars off that whatever because they're trying yeah. to they're trying to upsell outsell somebody i don't care the thing yeah. is is you come in here you are getting somebody that has a passion to sell and yeah. somebody that is gonna that is gonna actually show you what you need Somebody that's got experience, that's got knowledgeable. I'm not here to sell you some handcrafted luthier guitar, like just because I am. I'm here to sell you something practical that's going to work for you yeah, and what yeah. you need. And, if you're just and people out, think that cheaper guitar means that you know, well, this cheaper guitar, like let's let's use an example of a uh, like the Oscar Schmitz. Those are kind of yeah. entry level guitars, um, but you have students coming in there that that's what they need is an entry level guitar and it's still very playable all the way up to very like the cool. lag you can pick any guitar off of that wall and actually perform with it like just like we just watched that video with ava she pu she took a guitar that's in the shop there it's not a five thousand dollar guitar it's not a cheap guitar it's but it was ready to gig with right off the wall yeah for sure so i set it up and let me tell you something you know you know, somebody that's cut and trying to do, I don't, I don't want you to come. I mean, I'm going to give you a great deal, but I don't want you to come for me the best price wise. I want you to come to me because I know my stuff and then I know what I'm doing. And you're getting a good deal. If somebody wants to take $200 off something and they want to lose that, go ahead. I'm here to, I'm here to not only, I'm here to give you something practical and give you something that's going to, that's going to be for you. Yeah. And it's probably, you know, likely it's had a professional setup done on it if if it wasn't ready already. Yeah, you're getting something that's had that's had love to it and that yeah. knows what what needs. And the thing yeah. is, is I I'm I'm gonna take care of you and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure that you were taken care of and right. 
You know, some you know, you're gonna you go somewhere and you get a guitar and they trade it for it used and it's got rusted strings on it. They may not know how to set it up yeah. and different stuff. You're getting somebody here that actually that takes care of the stuff that even you stuff. I set yeah. you stuff up, I buy, and that take care of it because I want to make yeah. sure when you come in and play it that you're playing a nice guitar and then you're walking away with something that's going to be that's going to be comfortable yeah. and, and play. And strings, man, that's another thing that's <laughs> that's another thing that kills me in in guitar stores. I mean, I've been going in them and and dreaming about buying guitars ever since I you know, started wanting to play guitar and I've walked in and saw some dream stuff, man, that I'd always wanted to play and then grab it off the wall and the strings feel sticky almost. They've been on there so long and so many people have pulled it down and played it. And it's like, man, come through every once in a while and put some decent strings on these things. You need a second? My mic was muted, so that was why. So, real quick. You can hear me, right? Yeah. So, real right. quick, I want to say something real quick before we get back into what we was talking about. So, I want to take a little second off about local businesses. I want to say that, you know, I got a lot of businesses around me. They may not play guitar, but they support me. Even though they may know squat diddly crap about music, <laughs> they support yeah. me. So, I want to take a second to shout out to the Mellon Center down there. For, uh, it, was, it was Friday. Friday they came in and they bought T-shirts from the store to wear while they're working. Every one of them down wow. there. Wow. And uh, I thought that was pretty incredible. That and, is incredible. And it's always good to support other businesses, even if they don't. They they probably don't know how to play guitar or know much about it. But the thing is, is they're wanting to help and support and to see somebody else succeed. Yeah. And, yeah, man. And there's stuff going on up there on the hill, man. I mean, I really had a. I, that's another thing we was talking about. What's what's happened in the last two weeks, man? We had this. Uh, Brandon threw this uh, one year anniversary bash, and man, we had a blast up there. There was awesome live music. Had a food truck up there. I mean, it really something was going on on the hill that night, and man, it was cool. I'm gonna do it again. By the way, I'm not gonna do a bash, but. I've been yeah. asked. I'm gonna do like a one year. I'm gonna do like a celebration. Have some chairs out. Have a food truck and have some more. Live so, music. how many people you think we had at the one year? We probably thing? had about sixty. We had several people there, and and really, it's it's not like uh, we had the ultimate spot to have sixty people out there. But man, we really made it work. People it was bring, nice. People bring lawn chairs. They bring their like lawn. People bring like uh, camping chairs, like fold chairs, and they were yeah. Sitting. I mean, sitting there, it was nice. I mean, there was plenty of there was plenty of seating for everybody, especially when like uh, Brad Harden played. He was he was the headliner for the for the thing, and he had basically an entourage with him. He, he always does. Uh, anytime he goes and plays, he has an entourage. And I'm part of that entourage. And Brandon's usually part of that entourage. Uh, but I'm man, he he sounded great. Ava and Brandon, they opened up the the show with a couple songs and they sounded great. Everybody got to see Ava for the first time live and it was just a good time, man. I mean, it, the food truck was delicious. I mean, everything went great with it and I really liked it, man. I think it was, people were looking, I mean, everybody that drove by where they were slowing down, like what, what is going on here? And you know, it's because something cool was happening. I'll tell you what, no matter what, on this hill, Brazil guitars will always rock this hill. <laughs> yeah. Always... It, it was it was odd. I felt weird sitting out in that parking lot out in the open like that. But once we once everything got started, it we were in our own little world up there, man. It was actually a really cool little event. It was very freaking cool. So 
So the next time anything gets planned on the hill up there with live music, show up, guys. At Frizzell Guitars. At Frizzell Guitars. Clarify that. <laughs> so, um, basically, so people ask if I would, some people ask me if I would do that again. So, actually, I'm going to be t- discussing more about it later on today, but I'm looking at offering some things up here at the store on Saturdays, some events. Yeah. Uh, you having trouble hearing me, Dave? I'm sorry. Let me see if I can turn myself up. Um, hopefully that's better. So we're going to have some stuff on Saturdays up here at the store. We're going to have some like events going on, some workshops. So different various things happening at the store on Saturdays, which is going to be cool. And uh, so, you know, hopefully maybe maybe we can we can do some cool things i really yeah. want to really be engaged in my community that i'm in i hope dave can hear you a little better now what's up dave said still muffled but a little bit better. still muffled hmm. um yeah yeah i don't know i guess a little better is better than none better knocking things over how about now dave am i still muffled or is it still hopefully throw the gain to it (laughs) yeah maybe that makes it a little better now yeah that that make it sound a little bit better i can hear you good but but it's man this stuff's strange man when you start trying to live stream everything's just like um totally different than you know you think everything sounds great and it does to us and then you find out something like that but anyway hopefully yeah so it must be okay he says that. it's all right let's just roll alvin says it sounds good to him Perfect. so what do you think what are you thinking about these events you're talking about on saturdays up there well what's some of the ideas well my idea and i want to get jonathan in on this so this ain't set in stone but maybe do like a music for kids like bring kids in have a workshop for kids and do music. yeah Bring them in and yeah. talk about different instruments and do a music workshop for kids. Yeah, I, I've always I had this idea to do that, and we talked about it before. But I I thought about trying it, just testing the waters, like at my church, and bringing like my dulcimers and uh, um, you know ukuleles, all that stuff. I've I've got all tons of odd ball instruments, I and we would like test the waters maybe here at the store. With yeah, and and, and, and tell the you know kind of. Tell them what we got. Tell them about these instruments. Let them take a look at them. And, and, and maybe may, maybe when we do it, it's like we talk about the dulcimers, I can bring Paul in, have Paul educate yeah. him, and tell about his process of it and a little yeah. history, stuff like that. We want to make it fun and activities for the kids. I want to be engaged as much as I can in my community because I want to be yeah. involved. I want to be Well, those kids, in- those are your... Those are your future musicians yes. that we're going to be listening to, and those are your future customers, you know. Yes, yeah, so uh, another thing I wanted to mention, too, uh, is, so we were talking about, like, gear, what's new. Any new music gear out there that you want to mention you've thought about or seen? Anybody got anything? I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't had the time to really uh, – look around for new stuff here lately uh i've been playing every chance i get um but i haven't been doing much wish listing here lately so uh I have my friend uh robbie uh, he just got a new prs um uh, and that it's a it's an se but man i was really impressed with it uh, another guitar that i saw the other day ha- was actually up at the frizzell guitar um one year anniversary thing and that was uh your amp guy is he not is, isn't he the amp guy yeah, Justin. he had a sterling by music man and i was super impressed by the the fit and finish and the feel of that guitar oh yeah for sure so i'll tell you something that i thought was super cool that i really like is uh that i really seen i liked what was it i'm Oh, there was a there was some kind of amp thing that came out, and it had a lot of different effects on it. And I thought it was really cool. 
It was not like your typical modeling amp. But there's a there's a lot of cool stuff. That's uh, I tell you, I played a, a good guitar. I played here recently was uh, your friend uh, the other day. I was in, and I'm gonna brag on a Gibson a little bit, but uh, that was a Hummingbird Standard, correct? Yes. And I, I got to play this this guy's. What's his name? His name is uh, well, um, Hagen. Hagen. I got to play Hagen's uh, Standard Hummingbird. Gibson, by the way. Gibson Hummingbird, and it was uh, it was awesome, man. I mean, it's it had a really good tone to it, man, and it felt good. I mean, I know you done a little work on it, so that's probably why it felt that good. But it, it was a nice piece, man. I was impressed with it. I'm like. Like, man, like, the whole time I'm looking at that guitar, I'm just in awe. Yeah. Because well, what it is, man, is, is like I told you when I, we first started doing this show, I was always this guy that whenever I'd play Gibsons out in stores and places like that, I never really got a hold of one that had good, I, I'm not going to say tone because they had good tone, but they didn't have the brilliance that I'm used to hearing out of like a Martin. And here lately, I've played. Several. I've played three Gibsons that, you know, they they play great. And I think you had a hold of all three of them as far as setup wise. Yeah. All three of the ones that I played, you done work on, and they all played great. But they all sounded great. But the best sounding one still today for me is that Dove. Yes, and that's uh, that's Mister <laughs> that's Mister Alvin Key Sailor. That's his guitar. And comment. it's because it was a vintage guitar. I mean, it it was so Alvin. That's awesome. been commenting in the chat. That's his guitar. Oh, okay. What's how's it going, Alvin? Really, really love that guitar. Yeah, he yeah. So Jaden did that video on it, and uh, and after Jaden, he did was that blown video, away by it too. Yeah, but after Jaden did that video, man, man, I think Alvin fell back in love with that thing. I think he. Yeah. I think it's sold, correct? Uh, uh, it's gone. Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, yeah. Alvin, he wanted to know if he could put it back in his collection, and I said sure. He he heard Jaden play that video, and after Jaden and you know stuff playing that video. Oh, so he ended up keeping the guitar. Yeah, yeah. He ended up Jaden ended up playing it, making it sound so good that it was hard not to want to get rid of. Which good I call. That good call. I I wouldn't have parted with that guitar. There was three. There was there was like three people that tried to finance it. Nobody had the nobody. Had yeah, nobody could get it done. Yeah. Uh, he's lucky that he he's lucky that it didn't sell, and he's lucky that he got to bring it back home with him because it it's well well worth keeping, man. Oh yeah, very well worth keeping. So um, yeah, I'll tell you what. There's been some guitars in here that really just turned my head and made me say. Like yeah, that's what I, I thought about that uh, one time before when we were on here. You know, of everything that's come through your shop, everything that you've sold or had on consignment or any of that, even stuff you've worked on, if you could pick anything you've worked on or had even came through that shop door, what would you what would you keep if you could pick one of them? Nineteen sixty three Hummingbird. Nineteen sixty three Hummingbird. I I put new frets in it, redid the bridge on it, and that's just a solid piece. Nineteen sixty three oh, wow. Hummingbird. So, so as Gibson, I know Martin, I, I don't know what year they started doing it, but it, when did Gibson start using truss rods? Is that? Gibson invented the truss rod. You knew that, didn't you? I did not. Yeah, Gibson actually invented the truss rod. So Yeah, I know. So like a lot of your vintage Martins, a lot of them don't have truss rods. They have like know. what's called O-beams or T-beams. T yeah. O-beams or T-beams. Uh, but they actually... They actually Gibson invented it. You watch Gibson TV a lot. You'll I'll quote back to uh, Mark uh, Agnesi with Gibson TV and uh, okay. Jim Nicola, Master Luthier at Gibson. Uh, Gibson invented it. I mean, it's just one of their thing. I want to say, and don't quote me. I, I honestly don't know exactly, but I want to say it was in the fifties, maybe. But I don't okay. have an exact. Somebody can look it up and tell me. Yeah. Don't shoot me. I worked at Gibson. I should know this stuff. And uh, well, I mean, you, you didn't work there as a historian, <laughs> you know. I, I'm drawing a blank on it, but uh, yeah. if you haven't, go watch those Gibson TV, uh, Gibson TV videos on the factory tour, man. Man, it's incredible. These guys have an art when they're building these guitars. Now I'm sure you can learn a lot. 
Yeah, but let me tell you something. These guys have an art. People, oh, Gibson, they're qual- blah, blah, blah. They had quality issues because they had poor leadership. They had a poor CEO. Gibson yeah. Gibson has great leadership now, and their quality is impeccable. These people working at Gibson always knew how to do good quality. Just what are you allowed to do? You know what I mean? Well, morale and everything's got something to do with it. Yeah. Like it. and what they let you do. I mean, a lot of these guys for years were not allowed to do certain things. And the yeah. quality was not important. It was quantity. And now that people, now we have leadership there that's focusing on the quality, focusing on the quantity, or more or less the quality than the quantity. Yeah. See, better. I always felt like they were that Gibsons were a little overbuilt, like they were a little bit. Uh, I, and it was just by the sound I was getting out of the ones I played, which probably had dead strings and guitar stores and stuff. But I always felt like the tops were thicker, thicker than like a Martin top, or weren't as vibrant as like a a, a lighter built guitar. But I once I got a hold of some good Gibsons, I was really impressed. And let me tell you something. This is what got me hooked on Gibson. I used to be a Martin fanboy. I used to think that you couldn't get another guitar, that if you made it in music, you had a Martin guitar in your hand. That was my thoughts for many years. And this is what changed my thought thought process about that every week. I thought that nothing could beat a Martin D45. That was the gold. The guitar, it was just the best guitar in the world. And I thought, secondly, Taylor was okay, but I thought they were a little overrated. And they were, you know, they were overhyped up than they really are. Went, Taylor's a good all-round guitar, but they are not like great in any department to me, except playability. There, a lot of times they're really playable. But let me tell you what, I went and I watched a guy. These two guys were sitting around playing bluegrass music one night. And this guy had a D45 and he was playing it. it. Sounded great. Don't get me wrong, but this old man, this older gentleman in coveralls, pulled up and he whopped out a J200, and it was yeah. Rosewood Sunburst J200. And he took a lick on that thing, and it sounded so beautiful. It sounded better than that D45 did. And the guy that owned the D45. It's got a lot more soundboard, too. Yeah, and the guy that owned the D45 literally sold his D45 the next day for a J200. That's how much mm. impact that guitar had is because yeah. it sounded I've great. I've played a – there was a – I was in a store one time, and they had a J, uh, J200 non-cutaway rosewood back and side, sunburst. Oh my goodness, man! That was an awesome guitar. Um, I'm not gonna say I'd rather have it than a D45, but it, it was really nice, man. But he had a he had a J200 Deluxe, which it had the abalone around it and all uh-huh. that. Yeah. The the purpling and it was pretty. But let me tell you something. This guy here played this guitar like nobody's business, and I mean it sounded incredible. Had a bone nut and saddle on it. Had bone bridge pins. This guitar was incredibly played. And, I mean, it was so comfortable. The action was super low. And I'll never forget that guitar. Is That's why I wanted a Gibson guitar. Yeah. Because a Gibson acoustic is because of that. I mean, I just, something something about a Gibson acoustic with the plural inlay on the headstock and the way they look is just iconic to me. That's yeah. just, to me, what I love. So, uh, we're, we're, we're drawing to the end of the episode here. And... Um, I'm glad everybody. I'm glad everybody that did come out live actually showed up today and and watched it. And I I hope to see you all next week. And then those if of you everything that are goes on. great, and we'll be here next week. But anyhow, and and I'm happy for even the guys that are going to watch it later because a lot of people they don't have time at ten o'clock right in the middle of the day or or whatever on a weekday to stop and watch. So a lot of our viewers we catch up with later. But anyway. Uh, Brandon's going to give us a little jam here, uh, kind of like an outro jam. We're getting ready to close down the episode, and this is kind of our uh, outro jam. <laughs> so here we go. Hopefully I do this justice. Good luck, buddy. Well, when I was born A living doing the best I can when it's time for leaving. Hope you understand. I was born a rambling man. My father was a gambler down in Georgia. 
You wind up on your own, get off the gun. Yeah, I was born in the backseat of a Greyhound bus. Rolling down Highway 41. Lord, I was born a rambling man. Trying to make a living, doing the best I can. When it's time for leaving, hope you understand. I was born a rambling man. good day i hope you sell a bunch of guitars today um you all have a great week we hope to see you next week